Hey, neighbor, nephews, what's up? It's Jeremy. Um, you're not so intrepid host. Um, you may notice a little bit different. In the, I did some clicking over the weekend and experimenting and just dabbling with this screen capture software I have. And, you know, now there's, there's this. So that's cool, right? Update. Um, so topic of today's video is uh, we're gonna, I've, I've been running into people and they're like, I don't know what to make. Uh, how do you make a city? And so I kind of just jumbled around in my mind. I'm like, how do you make a city? Um, we're gonna spitball it a little bit, maybe do a little kit bashing in that. And I'll exp you can Google what that is if I don't explain it. Um, and uh, we're gonna make a city out of primitive objects and we're gonna try to keep it low poly. And I mean, if you wanna go higher poly, you can. I'm not controlling your mouse at all, but I'm gonna go minimalist. Maybe I'll, maybe I won't. Maybe I'm gonna try to go minimalist, and just, just the, the as few polygons as possible, so I can just get to the next one. It's, it's, it's not like a, a aesthetic I'm stuck to with the low poly. It's just, um, it's kind of I find it easier to get a rough draft done with low poly, faster than sculpting or any kind of like procedural method. Um, fun fact, I saw on the internet this guy posted a video where he was in Blender and he like worked for an hour for doing procedural stuff and then it, it made like seven boxes with the same texture on it and you could have done it in like 10 minutes tops just moving polygons around and adding a texture to it. So beware of the procedural. It's, it works, but it's, is it, could you just get it done with polygons faster? I ask the question. So. Without any further ado, I got that out of the way. Let's, uh, you wanna make a city? You wanna make something cool in uh, the 3D Studio Max? Yeah, that sound like, well, it's gonna... Follow me. Where's that button? There's that button. Okay, so here we are. Now, uh, it might be a little garish and shocking at more changes, uh, added colors, because it's just, um, once you've been like, you know, putting some time into this app, you just, the gray is everywhere. I mean, I can't, I couldn't even figure out how to get rid of it on the menus, but we got some colors, some, some interesting eye catching. My favorite color is this agua blue we got going on here. So it's just, there it is. If you can't handle it, you could just, I don't know, turn your screen to black and white. I don't, I don't know, something. Uh, if, if you got any problems, then you just, color correct your screen just I mean I'm sorry it's I like it so without more further ado let's get into uh, causing some trouble with some polygons here let's make a let's make a polygon treasure we will cherish as our first city we made so let's uh, hop in over here what we got is I don't know if I need to go over the user interface for you again or just like just a quick run through. Um, you can just kind of, if you haven't used Max much or before, you can just kind of hover over all the uh, buttons and kind of give you a tooltip explanation if you just don't know. And uh, it'll give you the hotkey. Boom, look at that. It's the hotkey. M for material editor. Fun fact is we're not going to use materials right now. We're going to, the first step is just to get a rough draft, polygons everywhere. And we're gonna start from the bottom and climb our way up the mountain. Um, I've done this before where I kind of started at the top of the mountain where I just made skyscrapers and buildings. And and uh, what we're gonna do now is kind of like a reverse of that technique because I had a little bit of trouble with it once I got kind of the buildings laid out and I had to go down to the next smaller. I'm like, oh man, like I'm trying to navigate with all these buildings in the way. So we're gonna just, we're gonna try a different way and just reverse it and we're going to ground up we're going to start with the ground plane then we're going to start with a road or two and keep it low poly and then we're going to make like a stop sign or some random like dumpsters some urban assets or random things um if you know if you can't come up with anything just uh just you know just kind of think about it and mull it over get some reference images if you have to or just google like uh Chicago or some urban area, your favorite, just your favorite town. Get some reference images and just see what's there. See what's in the your city of choice. 
Um, I am not going to use the reference method. I am just going to spitball kit bash this thing with random colors everywhere. Um, some of this technique is called gray boxing. And again, that's a lot of gray. So we're going to do like a Crayola boxing. I hope that's, I hope that's not copywritten with somebody or anything. Like, we're going to just, we're going to have random colors. And, uh, if you need, you can, uh, search Google or your favorite search engine and search for uh, three studio max random color script in case you have like a scene where it's just like a hundred plus objects and it's all gray select them all run the script now you got uh, a different problem of it all having different colors uh, fun fact um, so without uh, any more further ado 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 let's get started so Let's just uh, start this off here. Um, I'm gonna just cabal right here. And then uh, again, this is the standard primitives. Um, you can check it out, there's more. Um, I don't, you know, do you, I mean, if you wanna have doors in your city, you can throw some doors around. Um, I don't know if you really need with the extended primitives, like a capsule's kinda cool, you can have like tanks and stuff, or like truck, uh, trailers that are ta capsules but uh like uh i don't know uh these are kind of like a tourist knot you don't i don't know show me a tourist knot in an urban environment and uh, then you then you can go with it so we got our plane down it's kind of green um there we go so don't forget to save and then uh we're gonna work our way up um now with this uh Kind of method working your way up you don't want to select this too much so we're going to go to object properties not clone i'm sorry i misclicked object properties and we're going to freeze it but we want to keep the colors around so we're going to click off of show frozen in gray and if there's any other settings you want to play with or name it let's see here uh, ground zero one start zero one Beginning. Beginning. Zero one. Check it out. That's not how you should name stuff, but. Um, so now, you can't select it. Also, uh, going over the user interface again, if you want to just only, like, say you got lights in your scene or cameras or anything, you just want to edit your polygons, you can click over here to geometry, and fun fact, you will only be able to select the geometry. Now, that might be useful to you, or it might not be. I'm two cents here. So let's go with the kit bash method. We got uh, this going on here. Let's make sure cameras are all kind of zoomed in here. And then, uh, let's see. So let's go with an, uh, another plane and kind of follow the grid here. And let's just kind of like a main drag right here. All right, and then let's raise it up. Oh, is it the same orange color? Is it just gonna be on that? Let's see here. That's, oh, here, this'll, this'll help right here. Assign random colors, game on. So, let's give it a little, there we go. And now let's make sure it's not inside of the other plane too much. Um, so, you want it just kind of here I am in the front view, I'm lowering it down. You wanna kind of have it near. So you can't really tell from the top view how close it is. You can tell from the perspective. If you get it right, if you get it, you can't see it. If you get it like in the same spot, it'll kind of clip. So you wanna have it just above. And then what we're gonna do, um, I would be tempted to go to edit mode and like start perfecting this box, but uh, we want to just uh, kind of get some momentum going here. So you can uh, just real quick though, you can double check the length and width segments uh, of the how many kind of breaks it has, how many divisions, how much resolution. There's millions of words for it, but like you can add some cuts and make it more have more polygons to it and be less of a box but we're going with boxes we're going with primitive shapes right now don't get tempted to start editing 
on your second object. Like, get start editing once you have like 150 objects, or like set yourself a goal to where like it's just cluttered and there's stuff, and then edit it. So, I don't know how many times I'm going to mention that, but it's it's an idea. So, we got the road down. I'm gonna again. This might get a little repeating. I don't know. Maybe there's a script to just freeze on creation after making it. I don't know. So we're going to freeze that. And then we're going to do a little kit bashing here. So we're going to make a box. We're just going to go down the list and drop them kind of in this area here, off the grid, off the map. And we're going to do a little kit bashing where we just, let's see, let's do a cube. Hold on a second. We're going to do a creation method of cube. You got your options here. Boom, and then a cone. All right, and this is good practice just if you haven't like made some objects yet, just kind of go down the list, you know, boom, 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 boom. Sphere, maybe, geosphere. Can you tell the difference? Cylinder. Tube. And I like my tubes to have 13 sides. It's just kind of maybe like 12 is like the minimum for roundness. You know, keep it low poly. Again, let's double check with the, uh, whoops. Let's double check with the, uh, this guy. 18 sides. You don't need 18 sides. Boom. Look, it still looks round. All right. So back to the creation method here. We got the cylinder, we got the tube, torus. What is going on here, Taurus? Then, boom, and you can just, you know, it doesn't matter how big you make it because you can just scale it down. There we go, let's uh, let's get these going. Let's see here, top view, let's get a little organization here. We gotta clean our room up real quick. All right, so Taurus Pyramid. Ooh, I don't like that. There we go. And boom to the boom. All right. And then, so we got the Pyramid Teapot. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pass on the teapot. And then, plane. Boom. All right, and then uh, just a thought. We're gonna take the plane and just raise it a little bit. And um, I'm now that I'm thinking about it with the plane. We want to. It's just like a plane is just flat polygons. Like you can move it around, give it like a ribbon kind of depth to it and stuff like that. But I kind of have the thought now. Don't get too hard into edit mode, but we want to just. Do, it, do an edit, editable poly, go to the edge mode, right? And just, just click the outside edges, right? So you can go to the gap mode and then just go to edge mode. And then with that here in the front view, we're gonna press shift and in the Y axis, we're gonna just bring it down a bit that way. It's kind of a box, and we could have just made a box, but it's a special plane with a little bit of depth to it, so it's not just gonna just be a ribbon on the ground. All right, so with that in mind, let's just uh, make this jump up, right? And go with the uh, default shading. I don't, let's go with the, no, there, uh, no, come on, is that cool to you, alright, so, let's get this, let's do a second pass of cleaning our room here, all right, the sphere, 
in the geosphere. Let's see. Let's let's just compare the geosphere. I want to convert it. Let's go object properties. And so this bad boy is 288 faces. Are you trying to be low poly? 288 is kind of a lot. Then this guy is 960 polygons. What? That's not even that's not even mid poly. Bye. So let's go with our lower option. Again, we're just we're in edit mode, but we're not it's not we're not going to edit poly to like get into like the fit individual faces and other subparts and just working that way. We're just working with just objects and then again, sorry if I keep repeating myself. So a little room clean up here. And then uh, the geosphere. Was this the lower polygon one? It was. Whoa. Goodness, that's a lot. So let's go back with another sphere then. Okay, I have an idea. We're gonna take this down from segments of 32. There we go, look at that, 16. Let's make the radius 0.25. And then uh, let's not smooth it. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, Shift Z to change your um, view back to what looks like the undo for views. All right, so then the plane, and then we got this. So what I want to do is just um, make it easier to grab these things and just start dropping them down on the board and make an urban environment. So kind of prioritizing them kind of gonna use these shapes I don't know how many pyramids I'm gonna use but we'll get the this guy over here boom okay so um, uh, pyramid let's just uh, see what happens when we go with uh, one one and one there okay and then it's a kind of a big pyramid so Go with a 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Oh, not a 0.5. Okay, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. That's a manageable pyramid right there. Okay, I'm gonna save. I'm gonna go back to the top view with the T button in case you didn't know. And let's uh, get this kind of road sized here. Um, I've got an angle snap toggle on with the A key. If that all of a sudden you're just rotating weird, you might want to double check. Like uh, if you got the A key down, then I'm gonna highlight this outer circle, not the outer circle, but this inner kind of inner circle. And then here goes 90 degrees. So let's get the roads kind of about the same size. And that's with a little bit like this. Okay. Cool. So, Shift Z to undo your views, and there's the road. And we'll just uh, do a real quick. We'll make a copy of it, and uh, let's see here. Make double check it's not on instance or reference. You want to have it be its own object. You can give it its like a, a name right here. It'd probably be a good practice. But uh, we're not slowing down for nothing. Here goes. So I don't know, it seems like a whole lot of purple going on. So let's, uh, I got the assign random colors going on. Let's give it a, yeah, let's go here. There we go, all right. So the pyramid, Taurus, cylinder. All right, and then we got the cylinder. I'm gonna put these guys kind of together. And then these will kind of be, is this a cone? Okay, let's double check you before we start going. Object properties, 288 faces per cone. 
Is that acceptable to you? Mm. So, mm. let's uh, give it a look-see. Let's uh, give it half as many faces on the sides. And the height segments are kind of... Let's just... Uh, easy. Like, you could just go with the bare minimum of two, like in case you wanted to like grab the vertex up here and give it some shape other than it being a cone. So um, you can always go up. It's kind of harder, I've found, to go down. But you can always build it low poly. And there's tools and there's sub tools that you could just make more faces. So that's the idea here. Again, again. And so this, uh, I'm just being picky. And so the box is probably going to be our most used thing. So I'm going to press Z without anything selected, and that's going to zoom extend out to all the objects in the scene, in case you didn't know. And uh, here we go with the uh, beginning of the kit bashing. Um, make sure you got a beverage, a playlist. Let's do this. Um, so with the save and kind of like a, just a look in. Uh, let's see here. Now, and again, you can do this in any 3D package. You can do this in Unity, you can do this in Unreal. Um, and then uh, you can't really do the second step of the process, which would be to sub-edit poly. Maybe, I don't know, challenge me, maybe you can in Unreal with tools, and maybe you can in Unity with tools. It's show, like, I challenge you to just start gray boxing or color boxing or whatever you want to call it, just riffing. 3D objects around. If you don't know what to make, just start, you know, throwing polygons around. See what sticks. See if you have a good idea that stays around. Or just, uh, maybe I'll make a whole video on techniques to just not use reference, but just be like 100% creative. Not that it, not that using references isn't creative. You want to have the idea of the references so you don't mess it up. Um, but if you're willing to mess it up, you can just riff it. So, without further ado, again, 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 um, let's uh, start making a city here. So, I want to just uh, kind of get some roads down. I got the, the main drag here. Um, I don't want to be in any sub object mode other than like if I want to just scale it in any of the cardinal directions and just get her done I do not want to do not if you catch yourself going into a sub object mode you gotta maybe forgive yourself and just try to bring it back up to a 30,000 foot view or go with it and start editing and just see if that works with your mojo um, I'm gonna just again try my technique out um, it's worked before um, you can break out your reference see what kind of buildings look like, stop signs look like, you know, dumpsters, concrete dividers, um, metro trains, um, you know, uh, monorails, whatever you got. You know, space needle, just, just start ringing it out. So, I want to have some more roads in my town. Seems kind of boring to just have a main drag. So I'm gonna kind of just, uh, start this up and then I grab this off here and uh, and then uh, grab this guy and I wanna just make the road fit and you can just now you can probably go if you're tempted to go sub object mode you could um, or you could add a modifier if you just trying to stay out of sub object mode we can go with uh this is kind of like my before there was sculpting this was kind of what you had for sculpting the ffd box freeform deformation box i've clicked on the control point sub object and uh we can just kind of experiment here with making it shaped right and then if you want to keep it on the sub object 
Here we go. The sub object, you can collapse it back down and it'll just become an edible poly again. Or you can uh, turn it off and it just goes back to it. And that's just like a Photoshop layer turning off. Just think of these like as Photoshop layers as you stack up modifier on modifier on modifier. Um, it's not a bad practice if you're going to be uh, modifying it. Some people, me included, I kind of just stick around in edible poly mode with a little modifier here and there and everywhere. Your style might be uh, more modifiers than polygon modifying or editing. But it, whatever, whatever gets you throwing polygons around or objects around, you can do nerbs. You could, uh, you could be. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what they really are other than like planes that are like three D that are like I don't know. They're not. They're not voxels. They're not polygons. I don't. I don't touch them because they just nobody's paid me to mo make a model out of nerbs. So you can, uh, if you want to know about nerbs, just give your search bar a. 3D Studio Max and NURBS search and somebody more qualified than me could tell you about NURBS but here we go and I kind of I got this box just kind of to so I don't go crazy and making like an entire countryside I just want to make an urban area nice two four blocks and uh, so with that in mind Let's go collapse. Why am I not able to click off this object? Do I have a, of the selection locked? Oh, I'm in control point still. Ah, there we go. Boom. <laughs> Woo. All right, so I'm going to take these guys with a control click, and I'm going to just copy them down here. And then I'm going to take the, the main drag, which I froze. So I'll just grab this guy. Control save. And I'll just grab him. Um, let's do this. So grab it, put it in the middle. Let's give it a little bit of a sidewalk on the side. And then we're going to go to the scale method and uh, double click and make sure you don't have it. This this behavior, this 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 will drive in. If you, if you don't know what you're doing, like this this setting will just it was it doesn't work for me. It might work for you more just your own personal style. I like this method. Kind of so here we go. Don't want to overlap it too much, but maybe just a little. And we got that sidewalk. I'm gonna do a, a control D to unselect, a Z to zoom extend, and then let's get this here. All right, and uh, so far not so good on the just creating random colors. Maybe it's uh, I don't know if it's still kit bashing, but uh, maybe you just gotta keep grabbing the objects here, and it'll random color. Apparently, the kit bashing method uh, it's just gonna be the same color. I don't know how to just change that in the preferences or anything, or just I got a script though. So I can go over here, select it all, go to max script, run open script. There's my script. It's again available in the Google. Uh, I don't know if you can really read it on the, like if you tried to just grab it off the screen capture. And then we're just gonna go run script. Yeah. And One script. Oh, huh. hey, there it is. Boom. Awesome. Now we got a box of crayons. Fun. Again, I'm just not trying to get a sea of gray because that's who wants that. So we got let's do a let's do a real quick like here do a, let's just kind of break this off into quadrants there. so here to the scale to the uh, let's see here 
I'm just gonna grab another freeform deformation box. Oh, here we go with the move and zoom in. There we go. Let's go a little closer. All right, and then say right about there and right about there. And turn off the control points. And then probably gonna fit right. Oh no, huh? So Houston, we have a problem. We're not. Our main drag isn't really in the dead center of town. Now we could unfreeze it and move it into place. Um, we're the only ones that know. It'll be okay. I mean, I don't know if everything's in perfect boxes anywhere in existence in reality so let's just uh, go with it I mean if you have the OCD where you just kinda what I'm trying to say is this center line of this object could maybe should maybe be where the center line of this object is where um, the plane on the ground and the plane for the road if you want if it's bothering you okay just fix it um, again, your town could look like anything. You could be a uh, different layout. I'm just kind of trying to emulate what I did earlier with the urban area. So, there we go. Let's click off of it. There we go. And uh, Control D to not say. Oh, I'm still under something. I got. I'm still in control point mode. There we go. There we go. Control D to deselect. Z to zoom out. All right, so we could kind of look back at what was we made. Just, we could have done this quicker, maybe. Just thinking it out, but we are riffing and riffing. Kind of you stumble a little bit riffing every once in a while. You just got to be okay with it. There's an undo button. You could go over here and go file save as increment save as, and then hit the plus button here. I don't know if I'm in the way. We'll do it over here. Hit this plus button for the increment, and you can always back up your stuff. You can have different versions, aka iterations. You could have, you know, you could fill your hard drive up with polygons. Have fun. Um, but just uh, you could, so, with that said, um, what do you want to throw a pyramid around in here? Let's uh, let's go let's go uh, let's go to a little cooler looking view here. And uh, I'm a little, let's see here. So, yeah. Um, so, I'm gonna work. You can start just making buildings now, or uh, I kind of feel like with the, the method, the chosen method here is uh, probably what I want to do is maybe sidewalks or maybe I could that could be part of it like that could just be a texture we can throw on there or we can go like and there's a million ways to do everything so with that yeah let's go with uh I'm just gonna let me look at this real quick Control it. yeah see it could be like a sidewalk on these polygons, the road on these two polygons, and the sidewalk. Okay. So, let's go to the next kind of step on the ground up. We could, like, just, uh, oh, I'm in animal form. There we go. Turn that sub object off. We can just grab a box, or uh, how about a cylinder? And this, this, and these numbers are throwing me off. So, height 0.33. Radius 0.42. That's kind of oh, that's not what I want. I can scale it. So um all right. and if you want, you can, uh, and this is not cheating by going into sub object mode if you have a copy of this guy, right? It's still got the same you haven't come to sub object mode, it's still got the same parameters here. And you can go here and slice on. And with these buttons, you'll have to do a little experimenting, but say I wanted to slice from, you can just make a Pac-Man. 
or uh, like a half circle or quarter circle you know just you know you could just you could animate it even like if that's we're not animating stuff right now but you could just set some keyframes and just have fun so what I want to do is I want to scale it down in the let's see what happens no let's just scale it down generally I want to go with the X and Y scaling and kind of do something like that maybe even smaller and then here I'm jumping over the top view up here in the corner I'm over here now and I want to kind of where okay so where would the stop sign be? All right, so I'm not gonna zoom in here. Um, that looks like a stop sign to me. Let's zoom in here. All right, so you can get real picky and kind of put it where it goes. Maybe I wanna, no, I'm kind of, restricting it to the y and x axis just to make it like that and i want to let me change defaults let's do edge faces and so i don't need five height segments in this guy let's go with uh two hey look it's still a cylinder um, so what I want to do next here is I'll grab this box and I'll clone it with the shift key and the move and then I'll bring it into place here and maybe bring this in a little bit closer let's bring this up okay so I am Wanting to, if you can see that little tiny dot, I want to be actually, I want to be the stop sign, I want to be on this side of things, right? So, here we go. And uh, I'm going to, I'm really tempted to go to sub object mode here and put it, you know, and uh, make it the right size, but again, just keep it, keep it an object, and just we're just going to scale it and that looks kind of beware i'm gonna zoom in real quick hold on to your here we go and then with the stop sign it's probably gonna be right about there and then uh, we'll edit poly the dimensions of it but here and then yeah, it could be a yield sign or it could be a speed limit sign or something and we'll make a we'll start with this um, you could combine the objects either with the uh, select the link or you could uh, go to sub object mode and attach them you get the endless possibilities so what we're gonna do next we've got a stop sign or a speed limit sign kind of built here we're gonna go with uh, you can copy this around or anything you can you can just uh grab these two guys or like say grab this guy and then grab this tool here and you see these two boxes you just grab it and then boom now when you grab this guy oh when you grab this guy hey what's that there now you can manage a speed limit sign or a stop sign and that's kind of the uh, the working your way up the ma the mountain method there. Just uh, so you can name it if you want, because it's just check this out. If we go to the scene explorer, it's just a pile. It's just a mountain to climb right here. Well, it's a molehill. I'm making a mountain out of a molehill right now. But you know, once you get to the point where everything is populated. You might just go stir crazy with the fact that you've got just primitive names. Um, so if you got a tip for just like some kind of mass renamer or anything like that, that might be a, a useful tool. Um, 
I'm just gonna take my time with this method and just not worry about this part and just continue to go um, what you could do is you could have it on different layers um, you could just click this button here and then just right click create a layer and you can have those different iterations or you can have uh, you can uh, well might be a good idea is to go low poly on one layer and then copy everything to a separate another layer and then you can just hit the eyeball on the layer of your low poly layer after you've copied everything check it out it's gone and then um, so you can imagine if you had another layer right and we'll call it um, uh, properties we'll call this like LOD LOD1 for level of detail that's what LOD means sorry and uh, you go OK. And then with uh, that, say we took everything here. We make So to jump between active layers, you hit click that button, right? So if we go here, click them all, press Shift, and drag them into LOD. No, that doesn't work. How about if we copy Control-C, Control-V? No? All right, so let's uh, do this. We're going to select them all, go to Move Tool, and just ever so slightly press Shift and go in Z up. Go Copy. And now you've got a copy of everything, and you can just grab them and then put them in LOD number two. And then with LOT, LOD number one selected, kind of put it right back where it is. And then you could um, go to the modifier tab, go to mesh smooth, right? Mesh smooth. And then apply it to everything. And now, uh, there we go. Um, now you can just crank the iterations up and just try to break your video card with throwing as many polygons around as you could. It's a wonderful world. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to go back to the Scene Explorer, turn off LOD number one, reactivate LOD zero. In fact, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go back here and just un kind of delete all these guys here. And it's just for an example, if just real quick. So save back to back to the zero default layer and um, we can go back to just the creation method and throwing stuff around or the kit bashing method we got here. Um, I want to um, say I want to and okay so accidentally selecting something and you want to edit it like you press the Alt key and then I'll unselect it. So now we've just got the two objects selected. Group up we got here. Well it's not really grouped, it's uh this is a uh, parenting, right? A uh, relationship of a child and a parent. So what you do is you make one of them the parent and then uh, the other one the child and the parent. There's the child and there's the parent. So if I had, oh, wait, it's not working. That's interesting. Did I not? Did I uns? Oh, did I press the unlink selection button? Okay. Um, again, you can just press the control click, ground both, and then um, say one of them over here, and grab. Them grab both of these and then they're already in place you can set these guys up here and then look around and accidentally select too much stuff so I want to flip it around you can do the mirror mirror command or you can press shift rotate and again double checking that you got the angle snap toggle on Give it a 180.
right? And then in the move tool, grab it, put it on the other end of the road, but uh, you know, it's gonna look weird on this side. So there you go. And so there'd probably be one here. If you want, you can make these instances and later on you can make them not instances by uh, clicking this make unique button. So one kind of method of the madness is you could start with this one we started with, right? And then when you copy it, make it an instance. So what that means is it's kind of the same thing as the original it, if you edit the original, it'll also edit the instance copy. And then you can, once you're done with that, you can just go by and make unique, make unique, make unique, or um, select all and then see if you can make unique. I haven't tried that. Um, that is one method. Uh, I'm just going to go with the edit later method again, 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 again. And so I want this sign over here and so this is what let's see here it looks like a good number of stop signs or traffic signs or you can go we can go we can just throw boxes around and cylinders around and make uh, street lamps uh, the whole traffic light system you can use reference or just riff it um, you could have um, wires going everywhere, like cables and wires, and just however you want to, just whatever gets your mojo going, as long as you're throwing polygons around and wagging your tail. So, with that in mind, I kind of, the next step would be just, uh, let's just uh, rough out some, let's just jump over the buildings real quick and just kind of lay something out, like, uh, maybe like thinking about it here like per box maybe we can make like an alleyway on down one of these guys so I'm thinking let's just uh, grab this guy here I want to make sure you're on the copy and let's make an alley here so um, now that I think about it it's not gonna be a road right it's gonna be just a quick just divider between buildings I don't like this color. Uh, uh, let's go. Let's see, yeah, boom. And then uh, I'm tempted to throw a modifier on it. And control points. And put it into place. Okay. Control save, turn off that, turn off that, and kind of take a look around. I also want it to be a wee bit thinner, but on this line, right? So I'm gonna maximize this viewport, hold on to your roller coaster here. Z, while the object is selected to zoom extend uh, so I can see the entire thing. And I just kind of want to OCD line that up. And I don't know if I want the alley to continue up this way or not. Or uh, well, I'll just, out of sanity, I'll just name this alley. Zero one. And so this, this bothered me a little bit. I want some random colors going on here. So. Anything but gray. Oh, that's kind of gray. Is it blue or gray? Or it's gray. Um, so we can do this all day. All right. There we go. We got our city planning going on here. Some architecture visual going on. So let's get out of this viewport here and. Let's see, front, okay, there we go, left, and 
There we go. Top. All right. And you know you could just stop and admire your work, or you can just keep on going. You can do a coffee break if you need to. Feel free to pause uh, anytime. You know you're the mouse here. Um, but uh, maybe uh, take a thirty thousand foot view every once in a while. Don't get so far into it that you're just like you know just on the dirt on the ground it, you know it doesn't you know just don't be on the ground don't be at what was rock bottom you know unless you know I don't want to name drop celebrities but um let's see here um I'm thinking let's go with some buildings and I'm just gonna simplify it here I'm gonna go to the, the viewport and I'm just gonna lay it out in the top view I'm not gonna worry about the other dimension another dimension uh, quite yet I'm going to um, you could type the link width and height in you can go to edit mode um, you can zoom out all the way um, I want to just scale it into place and again I'm on the Y X axis and I just I kind of think maybe here would be a building so let's without any further ado go back to the viewports and what we have here is a building so we could uh, grab it and just uh, do we want it to be a skyscraper you know, it'd be like a taco stand yeah you got options I want this thing to be like say uh, here and uh, let's check it out maybe what I want to do you could just uh, give it a shift click on Z get to the top of it make sure you're not on instance scale it down the Z scale it up in the X and Y now you've got a low poly roof brought to you by Mountain Dew. No. Um, so, and the random colors aren't randomizing. There we go. And so uh, we can get more complicated if you want and say do this. Right? And then you could just kind of just make like a your own Gotham or Metropolis or New York or whatever. You could just let's see what happens. Uh, you could just call it whatever your name is, Ville. So we'll let's just call it Jeremyville. And so we got this kind of going on. Um, looks kind of cave. Um, and so, um, it looks like I didn't forgot to copy the box. So there we go. And let's put a pyramid on the top. Okay. Let's go blue. Got our blue. Grab it in the X and Y. Bring it on over. And then in the front view, we're going to grab this axis here and just kind of bring it into place. Zoom in a skosh. Scale it down. And again, well, not again, but uh, if you got your gizmo, say it's over here or it's over here, you just got to. You gotta keep track of your gizmo, and in order to do that, if you gotta edit it, you go over here to hierarchy with your object selected, effect pivot only. You could move it to wherever you want. You could press the center to object button, align to object button, or align to world button. Um, I kind of liked it where it was at the bottom middle, so I'm gonna undo. And just, uh, just just showing you. So back to edit mode, even though we're not editing anything. Uh, maybe, yeah, that's not, okay. So it's, um, 
not necessarily centered, um, but let's figure it out here. Let's go in the top view and let's just put it into place. Okay, I'm gonna spitball it up. There's you can get the grid over here and uh, kind of um, you could also snap to the grid. It's one of these. It'll snap to the grid. I don't know. I don't. I don't do that method. But if you gotta like, say if the measurements matter. Speaking of measurements mattering, I meant to cover this earlier before we started throwing polygons around. But if you go to customize unit setup, um, you want to shoot with your unit setup to where your your project's gonna end up. And so if that's Unreal or Unity or Godot or this, that, or Pygame, or I don't know if Pygame does 3D stuff. But um, whatever system units that app has, you want to have the same ones. So just give it a Google. Um, what does What's the Unreal unit scale or what the right word is for it? Um, but you want to have, you got options. Um, I got it on meters just for sanity. This isn't necessarily gonna go in the game engine this is just me showing you how to do it with the riffing on the city um, so just uh, one thing to keep in mind is if you don't do that if you just just never check your scale units um, you might have a problem when you import it might be really teeny tiny it might be really really big so to save you a little bit of hassle you may still have to scale things i mean i'm i'm not saying you're not going to have to scale things if you do this i'm just saying it'll keep it a little more organized and kind of kosher with if you have the scale right so that said let's make some more town here and I'm gonna do a control D and a Z. And so with that, with that box, okay. I wanna make another building. All right, her. And let's give it a little off, like not the same spot here. Not the same size, let's give it a little bit of this. And uh, what I'm kind of seeing this right here is actually um, let's let's get a little bit let's get eyes on here. What I want to do actually is kind of go a little. Just got an idea. And what I'm gonna do. I don't know. It just seemed like a box would be there. Let's check it out. Let's just grab these guys. And I got four objects selected over here. And I'm going to press spacebar, maximize viewport, get back to the views. And I'm going to go here to the front view, press Z, and kind of figure out with the scale of this building what I want. I kind of want to. What am I, I want? Here we go, make it a little shorter and just make it punch through the ground a little bit. And make it a little lower. Got a little planet. I want to put like a tree in here. I'm not gonna start making trees or anything. Like there's there's apps for that. There's add-ons, there's resources for trees. I'm not gonna start making a tree yet. But uh we're just gonna I th that looks kind of cool to me at least and it's a start of something um, let's, uh, let's run that script real quick and then boom there we go awesome more random colors okay um, it seems like 
Really good start here. Maybe I would add another planes kind of in this kind of compartment of here and just for like a maybe I want to just put a plane here. Um yeah. Yeah, that was at least okay. And then Ooh, okay. So back to the box. Shift, clone, copy, bring it in. And I'm trying to like imagine what size the people would be with these sidewalks, street, street sidewalk. So with that kind of in mind, I want to a little gap here between this building and this building and maybe give it a little odder shape there's you know a little odder shape than just this cube and save and maybe I wanna just for fun rotate clone and then put it here Check it out, and then in the X and the Y, bring it in. Maybe I want something like this, and something like this, and boop. Bring this down a little bit. Save. Let's uh, where'd that go? Where? Oh, nice. I forgot to. Did I freeze them all? Nope. Okay. I forgot to clone this guy. There we go. Alright, so I want some tubes. Let's double check the tube. The tube topology. I'm going to have a height segment of 2. Let's double check it by looking at it. Yeah. Uh, segments of 13. Um, if you Again, if you want, slice it. And you can just have some fun with it. I'm going to leave it all natural and clone it. Let's let's go over here. Now again, we got the height segments of 5. Let's bring it down a couple notches. Uh, maybe even lower once we get it copied, but uh, here we go. I want some kind of cylinders on the top of this building so what I'm gonna do X and Y scale it down put it in a place where I think it should be and zoom in okay so it's inside that that's fine let's grab it up and out let's scale this down and there we go and so on the X and the Y one of the copy here, get a little lower, and then I grab these two in the Y, copy, okay, boom, and then I'm gonna rotate just for a little something different. And let's see here, don't want this sticking out the side. Maybe I do want this sticking out the side. Maybe something like that. And then I'm gonna go, here I go. I'm going sub object. Can't help myself. I'm gonna grab this polygon here. Um, so what I want to do is go in the Z method with the shift, copy it, rotate it a little bit. Let's see. Let's see how many degrees I did it. Let's let's do. That's that. Okay. Don't press shift. You'll copy it. But uh, if you just let's do a forty-five. And bring it up a little bit and then bring it down another 45 all right and bring it in eh. cool I don't have any reference so sorry if this doesn't actually exist anywhere but you know what I think it looks cool I'm gonna grab I'm gonna jump to the edge mode here um, and then Double click around here. 
and kind of can't really see it from that view. Let's give this a little bit of a move here and kind of match that up. And then what I want to do, I'm going to jump to polygon with the four button over here. I'm going, I have the, uh, the last polygon on the end of the chain select, and I'm just going to bring it out a little bit. And then I'm going to save and I'm going to slowly back in out of edit poly mode and back into just object mode and kind of just go with it. Maybe I want to scale it some more. Uh, nope. Does it change? There we go. And maybe I want to give it like an antenna. Here we go, scaling it some more. Oh, that's what it's doing. Let's change that. There we go. All right, so here we go. And I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to go control A to select all. I'm going to go alt, drag out a box. And make sure I'm not selecting anything that's sticking out. I can go over here to edge faces, jump to wireframe override, and you can see I have some objects that are selected that are kind of inside the uh, polygons of the lower object. I'm just press delete and then turn off polygon edit mode. Go back over here and change the shading. And I'm going to change the color. Give it, is it more purple? There we go. And then I kind of want to make this like a, I don't know, maybe this is a sci-fi radio array or something, like an antenna array. Uh, it could be anything. So I want to kind of move it more into place, zoom in a little bit, or a lot of it. And make some more and then pop on out of it save um, so we got this kind of going on oops let's just uh, control click for the view here and let's mess around a little bit here with the placement I want to do something like that. Just start it off. Um, maybe give it a view where there's nothing obstructing other stuff. And double check everything. And there we go. Um, I kind of want to grab this guy. Save. And then with the uh, entire thing selected, I'm gonna just, I wanna do something a little different here. I'm gonna grab this, go to four, grab these polygons that I don't need. Um, there is a, gonna be a gaposis here, um, but I'm gonna go with the thought that nobody's gonna look up this way, or if I do, I'm gonna have double face on my material, so it's just, there's a hole there, um, up here, there's not a hole, whoop, let's go, here we go, up here, whoops, there's not a hole, what I want to do is grab these guys, uh, make some more, and then let's see what happens if we go over here the modifier list and do an ffd4 let's see and then control points save just in case not that this is like too computer labor intensive but just just in case and i'm gonna grab this i want to rotate it on the uh, let's go with the i got 60 65 70 well, 90, if I can get there. OK. 
Okay, and bring it this way. And let's uh, let's uh, see. Uh, I kind of want to take this, rotate it, move it, and then check it out. That kind of works. And then what I want to do is the path. Let's just on the Z, bring it into kind of place. Um, now you're gonna want to double check. We're kind of getting um, with this, we're getting overlap polygons that you're never gonna see. So say if I go to wireframe mode and we just turn this FFD off, just collapse all, and it'll just make it to the edible poly. It'll make the, it'll kind of like apply the uh, modifier. So with that in place, what I, I want to make another one of these. Where, why is, uh, oh, I'm in rotate. Okay, let me check the pivot. Here we go. See my pivot's over here. It's nowhere near the object. Center to object. Problem solved. All right. So I'm going to shift. And keeping in mind that I got a gap on the bottom, so I'm going to, just rotate 90 and then in the Y and the Z bring it over here oh, okay and then let's see here in this view we're probably gonna want to go here and double check we're kind of in the lines whoa oh okay what's going on Hello. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. What's going on? Okay. We good? Just had a little interference from my drawing tablet. Sorry, that happens. Um. So that was interesting. And so, with my hand out of the way of my drawing tablet, I'm curious. So we got some room up here. Come on, grab by the Z. Gonna bring it there. And then let's grab these guys and do a rotate on the uh, axis here, the X axis, and then kind of keep going with this tubes, you know, in the future wall traveling tubes. I want to just rotate this a little bit, and then I want to get it. Let's see, where's the where they at here? Kind of match it up here. Oh, and this one's kind of trying to escape. So we'll alt click and just grab this one and try to move it into place. Make sure that try not to overlap them. I mean, you can overlap polygons, but um, run to the kind of the thought where you have unnecessary polygons inside another object. And that's somewhat of a no-no if you're keeping track of your polygon count again 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 and so this is the start of something um do we want to hook this tube up into the are these tubes up into the pyramid or do we want to like is this like the power grid are we just playing with the power lines now um it's, it's your city you can do what you want um what i'm thinking is i'm gonna grab that freeform deformation here we go and i'm gonna Go back to the control points. I'm going to grab the two, stretch it out, grab the end, stretch it out, and I kind of want to do something like this. So let's give it a, like a, how about something like that, right? And uh, perhaps scale it. 
And there we go. And then kind of match it up with the edge. There we go. And again, during edit mode, you can kind of keep track of where all the polygons are and if there's any conflicting polygon issues. So now we got kind of this going on. And then let's see here. I want another guy over here. And so. Well, I think we've been doing this for a while. Um, you kind of got the, uh, the idea, right? Um, it's just a matter of uh, sizing the correct object, the correct size you want, putting it into place. Um, not necessarily in that order. Maybe you want to put it into place and then scale it to size. Whatever, whatever gets your mojo flowing. But uh, it, we kind of covered how to do it. It's just a matter of picking other objects and getting a variety going down of colors, shapes, and sizes, and making your own urban area. So with this, I think we can kind of call it a video. It's probably long, for one thing. Um, I didn't really check when I started recording. I just pressed record. And so um, let's kind of call it on a video right here, just, just preemptively. Um, I can check the runtime real quick, I guess, but, uh, just, uh, let's, uh, let's, you know, I'm thinking that, uh, we kind of covered everything. You know how to press shift and move stuff. You know how to rotate, press shift and rotate stuff. You could even, um, shift click on a scale, right? I, I haven't really done much of this, but you could just, uh, scale it and then copy it and then make it your own, right? And with that, I'm going to um, take a break from the camera for a minute. Um, have a great day. Thanks for watching, and till the next episode. Thank you.